first worked in television, mm -hmm. I was on air talent for 12 years, the morning show Traffic, and it, was un it wasn't produced. I'd have to do a live hit 18 times a morning. You're busy. I had 10 minutes in between each broadcast. I had people talking in my ear, accidents coming in 30 seconds beforehand. Yeah. And when technology companies came and pitched to my news director, they had all these promises. You can do this and that. When it came time for me to implement and learn it, it, it yeah. was three days of training, mm -hmm. and I, I just used the top of what they told us. Yeah. And my news director would be like, well, why aren't you doing everything else? Uh, I have like 400 <laughs> things I'm yeah. supposed to be paying attention to, you know? So we have to be easy for talent and producers. Yeah. If, yeah. If, if they don't want to use it, there's no point spending money on that's technology, right? right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it that's something else that Brianna works really closely with each of our clients to increase their usage every month. And every client we have has increased the amount of social media they've used month to month to month. Wow. And we are going to have over a billion impressions of wow. social media posts on air through our TV clients within the year. Well, that's a great yeah. success story all by itself. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty <laughs> exciting. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for joining us. Of and course. you guys, thank you. thank you so much for continuing to watch our coverage here at the 2015 NAB show. Uh, I'm John P. I'm Scott Ellis. And we got a lot more, so stick around. Yes, sir. Hi. Hi. Hi, Dave Curley. <laughs> Dave Curley. Rob you, Walsh. Nice you guys don't know each other yet? No, we've talked no. on the phone, I think. Okay. I just heard. Over okay. how many years? Yeah. Yeah, emailed a bunch back <gasps> when we were doing all the web TV, web, okay. web beat and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah okay. Web beat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Back in the day. Um, oh, we can go back to Geek Brief days. Went yeah. Back. yeah. <laughs> or forward to Geek Brief. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so uh, are you guys about ready? Yeah. Yeah. Good? Okay, so we're yeah. Gonna go ahead and get moving. I don't know who he is though, so. Who? Yeah. This guy, I guess. No, no. He just information showed up with a mic here. on. It's like one of the best looking ones we've had. <laughs> it's, it's, oh wow, thanks, man. Hey, it's, <laughs> it's, it's my Goodwill sports coat. Yeah, yes. Somebody's <laughs> grandfather passed away for me to get this coat. Wow. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Five ninety nine, red cap, yeah, red tag. Five hundred ninety nine. Five dollars and ninety nine cents. That's a good There you go. <laughs> I'd have paid seven, honestly. You really would have gone like all out. I would have. I probably would have pulled out a ten. I, no, I, no, I had to try to find the ugliest one I could find. So, and then I was leaving my house, and my wife goes, "Is that the only coat you're taking with you?" Uh, <laughs> and I was like, "Yes, it is." All righty, let's do this. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. He cannot. I cannot because it's too is short. Is it bothering you? Is you have OCD? Okay. Can you speak closer to the mic, Carter? You know, Carter, what I could do for you, I could stuff part of it in my what pocket. It, no, what if you run, run it down here, so it just goes in here? Sorry. <laughs> it's all about perception. So you start now, and you can go for a few minutes. All the way till five. It'll be, yeah, okay. yeah. But it, this will be about eight, ten minutes. Okay. Foster about. the card. Yeah, Foster just the card. Come in. Getting people on and. Is that okay. better? One thing you guys forgot too. One of the things we did add. Uh, okay. I can drop a myself, URL though. from Libsyn now into Facebook or Twitter. It, it automatically creates a player. Okay. So that was a nice thing to add. If you okay. Saw. So that was. Why are you telling me now? We haven't even started the interview. Yeah. Well, I didn't know if you wanted a leading. <laughs> Uh, we are. We are. Um, I need to turn you up a little bit, though. Can you talk again, Carter? Okay, that's. Carter's good. so soft-spoken. He really is. Curly yells at us. In we our love ear. you, Carter. Okay, ready. <laughs> Five.
four. Hey guys, I'm Callie Lewis. And I'm David Foster. Welcome to NAB Show Live 2015. It's day two. It's towards the end of day two. Are I you know, and time? somehow it feels like day six. I know. <laughs> time wise. That is the amazing thing about conferences is that time, I don't know, it stretches out or shrinks. I know we're here or... four days, but it seems like really 15 days. So <laughs> it's like... But we're having a great time. I've seen all kinds of drones today. I don't know. The drones are sticking out at me. Part, part yeah. of the reason is DJI is right across right, from like us. Right, it's like staring at like the nets right there. They're <laughs> flying around. Well, we have all kinds of great stuff for you all week long. And uh, starting today and the rest of the day, we've got a podcasting panel coming up at 5 p.m. Pacific, so stay tuned for that. But right now, we have Rob Walsh from Lipson. Welcome. Thank you. Of course. It's always a pleasure to see you. You know, I've. Nine years now? You and I go uh, back nine, nine years. years ago. I know. Now, little known fact, I don't even know if you know this, David, but Rob actually gave me my first interview. Actually, I. My first interview that I ever did on somebody else's show was, was Podcast 411. I know, and you were so nervous. It was so <laughs> cute. I was so nervous. Like, I was freaking out nervous. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and so, now, now the tides are turned. Now I'm nervous to be here in front of you. Well, the <laughs> yeah, right. How long yeah, had right. you been doing it when you interviewed, interviewed her? A little over a year. Oh. A little over a year at the time. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. as you can see, he's, he's really old school. Yeah. So you've been about around the podcasting world for since the beginning of time. Yes, 2004. <laughs> yep. And now you were, you've been working with Lipson for many years. Yes. And Lipson, for those of you, those of you who don't know, uh, kind of describe what you guys are, but you're, you're a podcast host. We are podcast hosts. We host audio files, video files, PDFs. Uh, so anything you want to get up into iTunes that iTunes supports RSS will support. And we make it easy. You upload a, a file, you add a title, description, hit publish, and you're done. You're podcasting. It's really simple to podcast. And we'll also do your web page for you and blog. And, and then we get into smartphone apps and then eventually even help you monetize. Because that's usually the, the first question, unfortunately, some people ask. How do I make money doing it? Right, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> so try to help you do that as well. So you do a lot. Let's take it step by step. Sure. So first and foremost, the RSS feed, the, the way you podcast. Right. You make it easy. Yes. So with iTunes, you, a lot of people don't know this. iTunes does not host a single podcast, not one media file. So you need a third party to do that. Now, if you want to get your show listed in iTunes, you have to have a valid RSS feed, and they have a lot of hoops and requirements that you meet. And most people don't know what those are, and they don't want to know what those are. Right. So they just want to go someplace. They got this audio file, and they want to upload it and get it into iTunes, and then have more content coming after that. And that's where we are. We make it really easy. You put the title of your show in, you upload some artwork, put a few keywords in, and you're done. Okay. Well, a lot of people, I think an another struggle uh, when I got started was actually having the ability to have a player on your website or, or whatever because, you know, a lot of people don't know how to add the third party because you used to have to add a third party player yeah. and all of this other stuff. And, it, it, and it, even worse is people want to get a player, you know, now into a, Twitter and into mm -hmm. Facebook, yes. and we recently added that, where you can take the URL from Libsyn and drop it into Facebook, and it creates a player for you in Facebook and doesn't take people out of Facebook, so they can listen to there and stream the same with Twitter. And that was you know, a big thing working with Facebook to get that done. <laughs> <laughs> Always fun to work with. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and Twitter is, is great to work with. And just out of curiosity, with the player that you have in Facebook uh, and Twitter, when you hit the play button, does the, does the uh, image show that you have uploaded for that image? Yes, or for that, yes uh, it does show. OK, yes. cool. Okay. It usually does show. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to. It's supposed to show. OK. Yes. Uh, and stats, you provide stats, stats. for the podcast? And that, yeah, I think at the end of the day, while a lot of people choose Libsyn, other than the reliability, uh, is the stats. People want to know, how many did they get? And where are they coming from? Are they coming from iTunes or Stitcher or TuneIn and other places like that? And yeah. we get that information. And even geo-target information. A lot of the comedians host with Libsyn. And when I asked them why it was the geo-target, they wanted to know how many people were listening in Cincinnati versus St. Louis versus Minneapolis. And they could go to the comedy clubs and say, hey, look, I got this many listeners in town. Book me. 
And, and that really helped the comedy people, like Mark Marin and others like that. Get yeah, you've seen a big uptick in the last few years with comedy oh, podcasts. Yeah. Co comedy podcasts are our biggest category. Number two. That's, uh, that's interesting to me. It's funny. Does it's Louis C.K. Ha -ha, have funny. one? That's all. Uh, he's been on podcasts, but I don't know if he's got his own. He, that, he I does it like where he one. sells the content. But Mark's got one. You know, Adam Carolla is out there. Mm -hmm. uh, Aisha Tyler is with us and uh, Jay Moore. And there's a oh, lot Jay of other. Yeah, the Nerdist has been with us forever. Yeah. So Chris is with us. Um, but the number two category is education. So it's people like to laugh, people like to learn. Yeah. I think that's what it really comes down to. Laugh and our, learn. Laugh and our, learn. Our technology, where well, I do a technology podcast too. Yeah. It, that's like the smallest segment now. Right, right. Yeah. So podcast Where it used to be the biggest. It used to be the biggest, right. And well, it's, it's really the shifted. early adopter trend, right? right. So uh, beginning it, when podcasting first came out, it was all about the technology because it was a new technology. Mm -hmm. And so the early adopters are the first people who are interested in mm -hmm in these new technologies and so they wrapped their heads around podcasting and mm -hmm. everybody was doing technology and well and everything's getting expansion. so much easier now because you don't have to you know because of everybody teaching what yeah. they did of, at the beginning because right. people couldn't do it now they're making it so easy to oh, do wait. you're saying i shouldn't have taught people how to do what oh I no 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 back then? no 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 <laughs> good competition is good um, but no but just that, that it's just getting so much easier yes. with you know like WordPress with plugins and all that stuff I mean it's just it's this change that's happened in all these industries that tech is you know yeah it, it, it's become more humanized yes. yeah. early on it was just geekified mm -hmm. right definitely yeah, I mean, when we started out, you, a lot of people were hand coding their RSS feed, mm -hmm. right? I did. Manually, yeah, I did. <laughs> and now you don't have to do that. You don't even. Most people don't, can't. That host with us couldn't tell you the difference between RSS and CSS. Right. I looked at the an RSS code that you showed me one yes. time, and I thought it was a different language. At yeah. First. <laughs> I was like, wow, <laughs> you, you actually doing? program this manually? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the way we had to do it back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Um, but you know, so you with with your own podcast as well as in in the Lipson world, right. you've seen a lot of changes over the years where where is podcasting to you now and where what struggles or what challenges are, are podcasters facing um, that's where podcasting forward. is it's mobile I mean yeah. it's it really shifted mobile last month was the first month on Libsyn where over two-thirds of the downloads were to a mobile device Wow oh, that's and, amazing. and and just a couple of years ago it was like 40% and a couple of years before that it wasn't even 25%. Yeah. Now, have you noticed it, it are you able to see if is it through like the iTunes podcast app or, or the apps that it's it, coming it's from mostly most? most of the mobile downloads iOS. And we're going to talk about maybe that in the panel later, but iOS to Android ratio is over 5 to 1. Wow. And if you were to break that down per per handset, since there's five times more mm -hmm. Android devices, you're looking at 25 to 1 greater than that ratio iOS to Android typical consumption. And I wow. wonder, that probably has a lot to do with the fact that podcasts pretty much started on iOS. Yeah. Um, and Google doesn't care about podcasting. Right. <laughs> and that a little bit yeah. to do with it. Even though they did, they did launch, like you can get podcasts, I think, in their library, but I've never even tried yeah, because yeah. I download them off through Yeah, through no, iOS. they don't really play that up at all. Yeah. Right. It's about native. Yeah. There's nothing mm -hmm. native. There's no native app on Android. And until there is, it'll never come close. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you see more and more people subscribing through something like iTunes or podcast, do you think the that podcast app without the a doubt? The podcast app without yeah. a doubt. The native okay. podcast app. Yeah. Okay. So do you think that it will get more generalized over time? You know, where people aren't using that app and they're going individually, or do you think it's really all about combining everything into that one app? Do you I know what think I'm what, what I really see happening is. Not, most people don't consume a lot of podcasts, and I think what you're seeing is a shift to certain consumers that are power users are going to find their favorite app, and they're going to go to that app. They're going to go to either the podcast app, a lot of people, or Shifty Jelly Pocket Cast, or Overcast is really popular yeah. on the iOS side. But then you have the typical consumer, which is five or less, like 76% or five or less podcasts they listen to. They're going to start gravitating towards individual apps for those shows. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. they're only listening to a couple of shows. They don't need a general app. They want a specific app. And so like Mark Marin, as an example, has his own app. He's had 225, over 225,000 unique user installs wow. on his, of his own personal app. That's wow, crazy. see, and that's cool, because that's like, I mean, I'm one of those that I, I do consume podcasts, but I do it when I'm driving, or I do it when I'm, you know, laying down and getting mm -hmm. ready to, to, to end the day, so I listen to very few. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, so I do have the individual apps mm -hmm. downloaded. Yeah, so. I, I, I'm kind of a mix. I have certain shows that are my 
you've bred them, I have to listen mm -hmm. to them as soon as they come out. And those that have personalized apps, I listen to them on their own apps. And then the ones that, I, like Revolutions doesn't have his own app, but I, so I listen to that on the podcast app. And then there's the other ones that I consume, and then the other ones I consume in the podcast app that are more like, I'm going to bulk consume them mm -hmm. every so often. Right. That's in the podcast app, I do that. Yep, like we get binge watchers. Exactly. It's like the same thing, I sit down and listen to like five episodes. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, yeah. A, lot, a lot more people are binge watching or binge right. listening, mm -hmm. you know, just mm -hmm. bam, 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 bam. When you have time, just get through it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Tips for podcasters out there, you've seen it all, you've seen people do it well, you've seen people do it wrong. <laughs> my, my first tip, if you're starting out in podcasting, the best tip is edit. <laughs> edit, because you're not as good as you think you are. Right. You're not, I mean, it, it, Wait, it takes what? a long time. Yeah. Well, not you, but I mean <laughs> others. Well, and, and I think also <laughs> people go into it with the wrong, like the wrong expectations. They want to think of the money first if your first and monetize it. Yeah, if your first question is how do I make money at this, yeah. this is not for you. Yep. Yeah. Podcasting is not for you. This is not where you're going to get in. The 1% are going to make money. Mm -hmm. And everybody else, the next 4% are being lucky to break even. And then after that, they're not going to make any money. Right. Yeah. And 95% of people won't make any money podcasting ever. Yeah. All right. All right. So Lipson, uh, how much if, if podcasters are getting started and they want to use you as a host? You can start at $5 a month. $5 yeah, a, a month. month. How can you get go started. wrong? That's it. That's it. You can get, even get your own web page for that. And you don't even have to know any coding. You don't have to know anything. Drive yeah, because each, pretty much, right? each right. episode gets its own page, correct? Yeah, yeah each episode gets their own blog page, and mm -hmm. you, each show gets their own page, and you can even bring your own custom domain over. And there's so many, so many flexible things you can do yep. with it. And a lot of people use WordPress, and I know that it's really easy to integrate with. Yeah, and you can publish right from Libsyn into WordPress. So yep. If you have your own self-hosted WordPress, you can publish there. If you have a Tumblr or a Blogger page, you can publish into them as well. And then you push out to Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and all that other good things. So we make it very social, um, but make it very easy. And it's fun. And I can say your players come a long way. Yeah, it's come a long way. Yep. It, it definitely has come a long way. <laughs> it, looks, it looks nice. <laughs> yeah, the early player was not so good. Yeah. But, but, you know, it's, it's come a long way. Yep, progress. Exactly. Yes. Hey. Anything we missed? Anything anybody needs no, to know about other? Uh, you know, if you have any questions about podcasting, Rob, R-O-B, at Libsyn.com. Email me, and I'll answer any questions and, and get you started. And we're at Booth, Fantastic. if anyone's watching it now, Booth N7714 over Perfect. in the North Hall. Thank you so much, Rob. It's Thanks. always a pleasure to talk to you. Likewise. <laughs> Libsyn.com, guys. Go check it out. And again, like you said, if you have any questions, and that's the beauty of this new media world is that everybody's open to answering questions. Mm -hmm. And like you said, education is where it is. So we're all interested in helping each other out. Yep, you don't really have to do anything blindly anymore. No, you don't. <laughs> A lot of times back in the day, it was just jump in. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys stick around for more here on stage at geekbeat.tv slash NAB show. We do have Rob coming back at 5 p.m. Pacific time for a podcasting panel. We also have Leslie uh, Samuels there and uh, Alex, Alex Lindsay. Lindsay. Yep. So that's going to be a great chat. Stay tuned for more. I'm Callie Lewis. And I'm David Foster. Bye. Okay. Huh? Oops. Uh, yeah, about 15 minutes before. Come on, we'll get you mic'd Pablo. up. Uh, yeah, that should, that should work out. See ya. Good to see you, Rob. Thank you. Hey, hey. how are you? So I know. <laughs> I'm good. Do you know David? I don't think you guys have met. Kevin Holmgren. Nice to meet you. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, it's only day two. Yeah. Well, I mean, technically, it's like day four for us, but you know. Yeah, it was like day seven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, things are going better. Uh, Good. It's really huge law firm in LA, particularly for a pro bono client. I got showrunners who started signing on and talking about the Duvall's manager. That's great. Um, Red's letting us shoot over at his studio. He's oh, nice. Over. Can I be your friend? <laughs> that, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, like my, my novels, but is that a red? Like, is that? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah there are different yeah, versions of like, red, yeah. So we're working on a project to teach the little kids learn how to read. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and like, literally, I'm in here trying to find people that have the capability of helping us get to this app because it's all content delivery. Okay. Which is kind of exciting. Yeah. And so, we're, so I, we've talked like, what, two years ago or something like that? 
Uh, yeah, I think it. Uh, I think it was two years yeah, ago. Yeah, two years ago. So it's been a long process, and we're doing Hi. a lot of research. How you doing? Good, good. How are you doing, Brian? David Foster. Hi, we're David. working with uh, the Dukes and Carter people. Yeah. We're doing some Thank you. Yep. Yeah. This was actually a yeah. uh, an That's ESPN cool. nest that was yeah. used during the yeah. NBA playoffs, I believe. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So it's kind of cool. Hang on just a second. Are we doing the money booth still? We're doing the money booth at four. Josh gave the day. That's probably going to be like five or six. Yeah. So, so just yeah. hang tight. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about yeah. five minutes. It, well, it, the, it's exchanged for real money, but. Well, but yeah. five minutes is still about five minutes. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, what? Nobody oh, yeah. Take it. Uh, Carter, what yeah. did you say? Brian, pleasure. Hi. Sorry. I'm Kevin. Hi, Kevin. I, I, I have actually something that I wanted to write. Did Carter say something? Mind. Yeah, he said I'm something. Right. I've been waiting for, I came back when you were not ready to go. Just say, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm hey now. Yeah, so I have everything but that. Check, check, check. You got it? Good to go. All right, NAB, we are back, and we are about to take our friend Margaret and give her a shot at a cash grab by putting her in the vault. But first, Margaret, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Why are you here at NAB? I'm from Norway. I'm here on a school trip. Very good. Okay, so what do you do broadcast-wise? Do you do editing? Are you a filmog filmographer? <laughs> what do you like to do? Web. You do web. Okay, so you're producing video for the web? No, I design websites. And oh, you design websites. Okay, well, very good. Well, have you watched anybody actually get in this thing yet? I think on the um, TV series, so. Okay. So well, I'm going to tell you right now, it's a little bit harder than it looks, but we're going to put you in there. We're going to close the door, turn it on, and you're going to have just a few seconds to grab as much cash as you can. Now, in addition to cash, we've also got some coupons in there. So that you've got uh, coupons, I think, for $10 off the NAB store. So if you saw a T-shirt or something you want, that'll help you out. You think you're up to this? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we go ahead and step inside and let's get going. Now, just in case you haven't noticed, we also have a little camera inside up here that's going to be keeping an eye on you. Okay. So don't try any funny business. All right. Are you ready to go? Three, two, one.
She's doing pretty good. She's got a pretty good handful going. I see a coupon in there so far. Three seconds. Two, one, zero. All right, let the dust settle. <laughs> there you go. All right, look at, I think you did pretty well. I think you did very well. Step on out here and let's count it up. Right over here. All right, she wants to set. <laughs> I don't, this might be a record uh, take. I don't think I've seen anybody grab this much. Okay, why don't you step over here because we're looking at the camera right up there. And we're going to go ahead and just try to count this off as fast as we can and see what we got. Well, first of all, here's a couple, three coupons. I'll let you hang on to those. You did very well there. And here we go. And I'm just going to throw them on the floor and we'll get going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four. It's going to be close. 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. I believe that's a new record. 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. Good job. I think the old record was 41, and now it's 49. Congratulations. All right, guys, stick around. we got more live coverage coming to you from NAB 2015. So we're we're live, but we're not really live live. We're not going. We're not live live, we're, but we're, we're live. live. We're live to we're live. them, or we're live we're to... We're live to live I have stream. no idea Hi, what's Jason. going on up here. Hi, Paul, really. Oh, really? Paul's you know. on here? Yeah. Hey, Paul. <laughs> hey, Jaybird. <laughs> Say again? Oh, I'm not hearing you. Hello. Hello. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Oh, good. Yeah. Sorry, oh, they turned me turn down you. because I probably would say inappropriate things. Right. <laughs> you said no, the. No. That's what. No. You said. <laughs> I told you. I told mute. you. Set it off. I uh, they'll they will actually mute you when we do our intro, just in case you cough or anything like that. So. Or say the. The. You're gonna the give what? me a complex the more you talk about that. <laughs> That's, That's what all, he's trying literally to all do. I'm thinking about now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we are ready we for are. her. Are you guys ready? I learned this move from David. She did. That's my signature move. <laughs> it's your only move. No, no, it's not. I pulled out more moves than that. <laughs> one more move. I think he has one more move. We need to do the intro. Hello, I'm Callie Lewis. <laughs> and I'm David Foster. No, wait. No, that's, that's the right. other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you guys in the, uh, the audience. We have a live audience. How are you guys? Hey, come on. It's, I know it's the end of the day. Yeah. Come on. How are you guys? Come on, let's do fun? jumping jacks. <laughs> Everybody up. Anybody want to show show <laughs> me your move? Yep. Oh, he's going like that. We got that. one over all here. All right. That's a new move. I bet you if we gave him the money box, they'd all get up and dance. <laughs> you know, the energy at NAB show here is always uh, just a, high. High level. High, it high, is. high, high. Except, you know, the end of the day, some people start to get, I have to admit, I had a cookie right before here. Yep. Because we had I was coffee and a cookie. The, yep. the little... Uh, the little lag. lag down there. So, <laughs> but we've been going since you know. 
a long uh, time. Sunday. Exactly. Uh, Brian from Red Rock Micro, yes. welcome. Hi guys, thank you very Here much. Here to bring us some awesome stuff. How are you feeling? Are you feeling the need to dance? You know, I am at this action? point so hopped up on Red Bull <laughs> that it's possible I may have set another record for you guys. And for those that That's can't awesome. see, his legs are actually doing this back here right now. He is dancing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something like that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Welcome to Thank the show. You. Thank we've, you. Good we've to be talked here. to you uh, before on CES or NAB. I'm, I don't even remember. We do we do so much of this. Yeah, yeah, a couple times actually in the past. Yeah. I love Red Rock Micro. Oh, you. you guys have uh, awesome gear. Uh, so share with the audience, Red Rock Micro. What do you do? Great, so we're actually in our 10th year now. I think the first year was actually at NAB 10 years ago. That's awesome. Uh, we are a US-based company. We manufacture and design equipment in Texas. Don't mess with Texas. Hey, Dallas, we're from Dallas. Yep. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah, we're right outside of Dallas, Flower Mound, if you kind of oh, know that. Oh, awesome. So come on by and visit us. I did not realize that. Yeah, we're really close by, so we're proud of that heritage. And uh, we originally started the company with the notion of how do we build professional level uh, gear and equipment and rigs but price it for individual people to actually own. So back in the dark ages, which I guess is apparently 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I was there. Yeah, you know, it was either studio budgets, studio dollars, or the things you, you know our average people like me could afford, it was either terrible quality or just you had to rent it. Mm -hmm. And we sort of feel like there was a better way. And here we are 10 years later, we've, we've got probably over four or 500 products, uh, individual products, we've done a tremendous job, and we've just loved every minute of it not only as business owners, but also as production people. We just love using our gear and it gives us so much more uh, production value. Yeah. So, all right, well, that's a great overview of the company, but uh, show us what you got here. Great, so. This looks like a, I'm not even sure what it looks like. It's like a monitor. Exactly, app. exactly. So this is something we've actually just introduced this year. I'm going to have to uh, tell you a little bit about the reason why we built it, and then okay. it's going to start to make a lot more sense. This is our Halo system. And we are trying to solve a problem that is prevalent in the industry today, which is basically around focusing. Yeah. So we are uh, fortunate that we have uh, a lot of very large sensors, very high resolution sensors. Uh, we have very fast lenses. These are things that contribute to this um, cinematic quality of selective focus, right? So we want you to be in focus, we want your background to be out of focus, we want to take that as a tool and move the audience's uh, vision towards wherever we want it to be. And now it's gotten so incredibly affordable that not only do high-end people uh, who we try to emulate use it, but now anybody who's got a $300 you know, Sony Alpha camera can do it as well. The problem, though, is that the technology and the experience required to actually use that focus effectively hasn't kept pace. So average people like me and you, if we're like going to jump on a set and say, OK, now we're going to use a really shallow depth of field, and we're going to sort of move people's attention from place to place, I tell you, we're not going to do it. That's tricky, yeah. And people who do it uh, as a, uh, for a living are finding it increasingly more difficult. You get 6K, now 8K sensors. You get people shooting really long lenses and want really shallow depth yeah. of field. So it's a problem for everybody. And you're starting to see people like Canon with their um, face tracking recognition start to poke at that using mm -hmm. uh, technology that exists today. So we wanted to solve this problem with this product, Halo. It's designed us to basically um, do automated focus tracking and do it for that range of people. So it's a combination of a great tool to use, but also um, an automated way to track focus of people. Well, um, before you get into the, to that, why Halo? What, what does that mean to you? Uh, well, Halo is actually part of what we're going to do in oh, the okay. system. So, so you'll gonna, see it. We're going to understand it and as you go it's on. It's just as a teaser, it's a verb. Oh, and you'll see it here in a second. Okay. So oh, I don't know if you guys are actually able to, to yeah. see yeah, this yeah. Uh, right. interface here. So fantastic. Um, what I'm going to show you here is, first of all, it's a beautiful interface. We actually are using modern technology um, to display information about the lens. So this is telling me I have a 24 millimeter lens. It's telling me the angle of view of the lens. And as I'm dragging, this is my demo version. As I'm dragging this back and forth, it's actually showing me, oh, here we go. It's actually showing me where I'm focusing. It's telling me the distance that I'm focusing. This is a really nice way to actually visualize focus. Now, where it gets really interesting, and, and, and not right now, but in a moment, we're going to show you some B-roll of this. Okay. I'm actually going to turn on, uh, there's a device that's associated with this um, that is our Halo unit. It is the same technology that's used in autonomous cars 
for collision detection and avoidance. So there's no setup, you turn it on, and it has instant understanding of everything around it. Mm -hmm. And what happens is this is my demo mode. I'm gonna hopefully turn this on. This is my um, fake agent here. This is imagine a person who's walking around in front of the camera. Okay. So number one is, as I'm actually clicking here and able to move this about, I hope, okay, here we go. Um, I can actually keep this person in focus just by simply dragging my finger. I'm not doing a great job because I'm sort of holding this up for everybody. Of but and it doesn't yeah, matter. it's hard to do it upside down. Well, yeah. Yeah. it doesn't matter like, where you drag it. It's, you don't have to be on it. It's, 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 right. You're so just it's keeping that halo around that person. Or well, it's, the, it's actually, this is showing me the depth of field of the lens. So you can see it's increasing as I go further out. So uh -huh. it has some understanding of the technology I'm using. Now, this is really great. Uh, and of course, you can use the wheel as well to do this. This is okay. really great for someone who wants to control focus. But I'm not the most sophisticated person, and the majority of people out there aren't. So the halo notion is I can actually tap her or him, and you can see there's a halo around them. Yeah. Oh. And now actually it's tracking focus back and forth. Oh, so nice. if I was to have a scene where there are multiple people who are moving around, and this may actually be a good time to show the B-roll. We went okay. down to our booth and shot a little bit of something for you guys. But you will actually see um, multiple folks showing up on this as dots, and I can actually click and move between those ones. Okay. So I don't know if we, we oh, go. here we go. So that's our. Halo logo at the booth. This is the device that actually shows it. We can. And so uh, they're doing the same thing with that knob. Right. Uh, so we actually have. You, you can see were. two people that are moving back and forth, and they're okay. showing up on the screen. And now, simply just by um, tapping on that, I can actually, as I said, halo somebody, and they'll actually be staying in focus. So, so now you can't halo two people, obviously, right? Because they're going to be in different parts of the the, the right, area. Right. Right. But we can go between them, right? So if okay. the, the great thing is, if you can understand pressing a button on a dot and pressing a button on another dot, now you are you can f pull focus. And the great, the really cool thing, if you think about this, is you don't have to worry about the actor hitting their marks exactly. Maybe the different takes. It's not quite the same. All you need to do is just simply touch the dot, and we know where they are. How now, what about? I'm sorry. Uh, well, yeah, before you, I, I think you're moving on a little bit, but how are they actually tracking it? So that, there was a little bit of a uh, device at the start. There's a, a, a thing called, we call it the Explorer, and what it does is it scans the room, and it's, it's what we call scene detection. So again, think about it like a car, right? You turn uh, oh, it on, okay. That's the and yeah. it knows, it sort of Got tracks it. everything, and then can pick out people, and then it will show you here in real time where they are and their location. Okay. Well, and what about the speed of the person moving? Like, is that, you know, affect anything? Like, if they're moving running or walking or? It makes no difference. So, again, they would obviously move a little bit quicker. But, again, if you understand the core technology that we have, it's kind of an advanced laser-based technology. If, it's, if the technology we're using is to do collision avoidance and detection, you can imagine the kind of the real-time aspect of what's going on there. You've got cars coming at you at God only knows what yeah. speed. Right. Yeah, actually, I've seen some of that technology. It's very, very impressive Super from the cool. back end. Yeah. They can map yeah. out all kinds of things and right. see people from way ahead. So that's the system that you're using. Yeah, you're so this cool. is Halo. Uh, of course, I quit out there just <laughs> briefly as I, as I love. We'll but pull it back um, So this is actually something, it's brand new for NAB. We're previewing, it's the second day people have ever seen it. Um, it's going to be released later this year, and our target is somewhere around two to five thousand dollars. So it's imminently affordable compared with anything out there that does something like this. And so, how does it connecting to your camera? This actually is all completely wireless. It's completely so wireless. Okay. So I could be com uh, far away from the camera up to I think it's a mile line of sight range. Oh wow! And a lot of people who are you know professional focus pullers are at the monitor doing their yeah. things, but. You know, average people like you and I, we might actually mount this on the monitor, select our, our halo, our person, and then just we're off and running and they're going to be in focus. Fantastic. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. I'm impressed. Yeah. I want it. Great. <laughs> what about you guys? Yeah? Oh, uh, this gentleman here, I I'm can tell he likes like it. I'm seeing like thumbs up, but they're, they, they need some cookies. Hey, guys, there are cookies right, o right over there, just, just so you know, if you need some sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure, you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Where? Uh, what's the website? Uh, RedRockMicro.com. And if for anybody here who wanted to see a more sophisticated demo, we actually have a working one down in our booth in Central Hall. Fantastic. Thank awesome. you, and thank you for joining us here at NAB Show Live 2015. And I guess we're going over to the cash booth again. Right? Okay. Oh, are we? That's what I, I think I just heard oh, that in my ear. Okay. <laughs> Take a look at the uh, cash booth, but come back here for more. Geekbeat.tv slash NAB show.
Okay, guys, we are back here at the NAB Show Studio One. I'm Scott Ellis, and we're about to take another friend of ours from the 100K Club, stick him in the vault, and see how much cash he can grab in 20 seconds. But before we do, let's say hi. Michael, we're looking at a camera right over there, so let's face that way. Michael, where are you from, and uh, what do you do? What brings you out to NAB? Sure, I'm with the Fox Station in Seattle. I do technology and news operations. What does that mean? What do you, you do technology and news operations. So what does your job look like? Uh, basically, I manage all the technology procurement and workflows in the newsroom and fix all the stuff that's broken. All right, good deal. So you're the guy that keeps it all running. Okay, well, let's see if you can keep running when we put you in here. Have you watched anybody do this yet? I saw, I saw one person. Yeah. Okay, it's a little harder than it looks, but it's like a money hurricane, so it's a good storm to be in. You're going to have 20 seconds to get in there and grab as much cash as you can. In addition to the cash, there's also a couple of coupons in there. Those are $10 a pop at the NAB store. So if you want some stuff in there, keep an eye open for those. What do you say we jump inside and see how you do? Now, how much, how much do you think you're going to come out of from here? What, do you, what are you going to predict? Hopefully more than $5. More than $5. Okay. Well, the record was just set at 49 So I hope you can do a little better than 5 okay. Let's find out. Climb on in. Well, you can face any way you want. Okay. There is a little camera up there, but we're going to be keeping an eye on you from inside and out. All right? Ready to go? All right, let's see how he does. Three, two, one. It is harder than it looks. I think he's hit at least his $5 mark, but I can't really tell at this point. Time's running out. Oh. <laughs> All right, come on out of there. Let's see if you hit at least that $5 mark. Go ahead. Yep, drop them down there, and let's count them off real quick. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, <laughs> wad of cash, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I'd say you, uh, you killed what you thought you were going to do. 22 is pretty solid. Good job, Michael, and thank you very much. All right, guys, stay tuned. We will be back with more from NAB 2015. <laughs> Don't, uh, Hello, yeah. on, uh, can you give a mic check real quick? Uh, uh. Test, test. Test, test. What'd you have for breakfast? Okay, you're good? Okay. <laughs> We're good. Carter, um, when you speak, can you speak louder into or come closer? No? Yes. Yes, that's it. Thank you. That's better. It's just yes. when people are talking, I couldn't understand. Yeah. You. I thought you said cash box, and then she thought you said. I saw. I thought you said we're going to the ch to the chairs or to the yeah, couches. No, she thought you said cookie. 
I thought you said cookie. Yeah. But I have my mind on cookies, so. Squirrel. <laughs> we are um, ready. What if we say no? Yeah, we're ready. Welcome back to NAB Show Live 2015. I'm Callie Lewis. And hey, gals, to oh. I'm David Foster. <laughs> You're right. I say guys like. You do. I think that's the, the northern guys. It encompasses all. Yeah, it's the per proverbial guys, I right. guess, or something. <laughs> I don't know. All, but all guys, gals, whatever you are, dogs, cats, <laughs> welcome to NAB Live 2015. I bet we do have some dogs watching. I know one that's watching. Abby, my chihuahua, is at home watching. <laughs> Hi, Abby. Oh, we love an AB show because it, it tells us the latest and greatest, and we get to see really cool stuff. Now, the other day, we were at Showstoppers, which is a pre-event, mm -hmm. a, a, a press event, and we got to get a sneak peek at our next guest from 4SE TV. We have Hyung. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you so much. We got to see this, so we got a little bit of knowledge ahead of time. But a lot of people haven't seen your sure. new device for SETV. What is it? Yeah, it's basically a little equipment that you can install at home, and you get to watch four separate programs on your iPad or your smartphones or your big screen TV at once. At same time, yeah. So, and we have a very easy to use app. So it allows you to have this experience without reading any of manuals or anything like that. Wow, right. sports fans are going to be happy. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what we are targeting. Yeah, we think a lot of the people, you know, especially the sports fans, that invested a lot of money buying a big screen TV already, and then they have a smartphone and you know, tablets and things like that. So we want to kind of, you know, being able to deliver a whole new way to watch a TV. So I made a little box and I developed an app that gives you a very easy to use and give a whole new TV experience. So that's one use case is sports fanatics, right? To be able to see, and you're going to see this, to be able to see the four different games going on at once. Now, uh, we were chatting about the possibilities of w what other types of people might use this. And a great uh, solution is, like, if there's a big news story going on, right? Yep. You can keep an eye on the news story and watch a different program so you don't miss Walking Dead, for instance. Right. Or the, lo the lottery ball or something. The lottery ball, sure. <laughs> you need some help. Yeah. <laughs> Can you yeah. give us a little demo? Yeah, so let me do that right now. So let me just unlock my, my so iPad. So this is, this is I, iOS or is it Android as well? Yeah, it's Did iOS as well as Android. Android as well. Yeah, so right now I'm just going to show an iOS device. So, okay. so we have an app. Right now it's just in a demo mode, so I don't really have a physical antenna plugged in here. Sure. Yeah, but it works exactly the same way. So there's an app. It just, all you got to just you know, click on that app. It's going to find my server box, which is this box right here that you will install at home. Okay. So as you can see, it just has a simple one Ethernet plug going into your router. And then now your iPad is working as a TV. Okay. Right? So it's simple as that. You get to control your volume and the Wi-Fi here with is, yeah. is always so is always you can control a little your, troublesome. Okay, let me maybe go to a different channel. Yeah. Oh no, that's Oh, that is cool. Look at what he just did. Okay, maybe there's <laughs> Wi-Fi. Live problem. demos, live um, demos. So let me see. Maybe I can get so you just you find the one you want and you drag it down there. What happens when you drag and Okay, so I think it just did a couple things here, but yeah, so basically when you touch the screen, the menu bar pops out, they give you an available wow. channel. So you get to grab the tile and then you drop it and they will change the channel for you. I think definitely Wi Fi has some problems <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. But well, we have a couple other things that you can control your brightness here with one control. Nice. You control your volume all here in one control. Okay. But one of the nice things that we have here is when you do a horizontal swipe, that you <gasps> go from a single screen into a quad screen mode. Okay. Oh, so you got a different quadrant you can drop one into. So, yeah, once you get, a, once you get into a quad screen mode. Oh, nice. Um, 
Yeah, so here it's coming. I think the whole Wi-Fi is just making things yeah, a little Yeah, totally slow. understand. Yeah, I, so. so for the record, we did see this in action uh, previously, and it worked out very, very well. Um, it was very smooth. So just forgive the Wi-Fi live demo <laughs> set up here. Yeah, so <laughs> I think it's while it's loading, let me just show you that you have, you know, so you have four quadrants, and you get to click on the quadrant that you uh -huh. want to listen to, and then that will change the audio. And then you grab the tile and drop into the quadrant that you want, and okay. that will also change. But another nice thing is you, you can push that whatever four channel that you have into your favorite button once you do that, and then you can grab your favorite button and then drop them. Okay, and then it will, it's supposed to change all yes. four channels. So yeah. now are you so gonna be able to, can, can you split screen it so if you only have two that you wanna watch? Or so is it just Technically, I can do anything between one and a four, but right now I'm supporting one and a four just okay. because that gives you a full screen experience. Right. When I do two or three, that will actually you'll have a little empty space. Yeah. So I have a capability to add different things like a scoreboard in there or Twitters or anything like that. Oh. I'm just going to wait for a consumer to experience this and then they give me a feedback on what they like to see. Okay. So then we can implement that kind of features. Now, what kind of content can I access? Content? What kind of content can I access? You know, like, uh, you have your, like you have your HGTV or whatever, and you were saying like Twitter or whatever, like what are the different mediums that you're pulling in uh, so that I, you have I, I, to? I mean, I would say I, there's I, anything over the internet, I can pull the data and then mix it in with a video. Yeah, but whether that becomes a Twitter or Facebook. Or like YouTube? You know, or YouTube. Yeah, so that all to be determined. Yeah, I think I just wanted to hear a consumer, mm -hmm. you know, what they like to see and what makes sense. So right. it's not launched yet. Yeah, it's not yet launched. Um, yeah, but we are. We just started the Kickstarter launch uh, last Wednesday, so about it's been about four or five days. Oh, yeah. awesome! So we are marching along at a good, you know, good, 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 good pace. And, and you guys are very close to, to hitting the Kickstarter hitting goal. goal. So yeah, that's... and and we're gonna close the campaign by June fifth, and okay. by then we'll be in production. And we'll have the inventory in July in US. So we'll start ship to cu cu uh, first set of customers in our early August. Cool. Oh, awesome. That, that's a quick turnaround, actually. Yeah, we've been Because we've been you doing guys have already been working, for working on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so show us the gear itself. Uh, you, you were mentioning it earlier. You have the antenna that goes into the box. Yeah, so this is a main box that you will basically get. And there is a little antenna that we provide as a, a free of service. Um, but obviously, you know, if you, depending on where you live, you may want to get a bigger antenna that okay. gets you a better reception. It all plugs into the same, same F connector. And then we have an Ethernet connection. Can you turn that around? Uh, there you go. Yeah, so we've got an Ethernet connection that goes into um, <laughs> you do this yeah, there you yeah. go. So you got an Ethernet connection that goes into the router. Okay. Yeah. So and then then there's a power. So it's right. real simple interface. So at home you would just install those three things and then you push this little button called setup and then it will scan all the channels and then everything else is happens on the app. You just have to run the app and then just it, it's just gonna work just like a TV. Fantastic. So where can people participate in the Kickstarter project? Next project? Uh, where, no, where, where do they have to go to get to, to, oh, get sorry, to the yeah, Kickstarter? Yeah. So uh, we have a website. It's called uh, www.4sctv.com. Yeah, so, so that's where you can go, and then you can then they will redirect you to the Kickstarter site. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And I guess one other demo that I didn't really quite get to show, that you can see the four channels on your iPad, but you can push a single push a button, then you can actually you can put that four channels on your big screen TV. So okay. if it's a connected TV, we can do that. If it's an older TV, but you still have a large screen TV, mm -hmm. then you can get a Chromecast and we'll also support that mode. Yeah, so then you will have a true sports bar TV experience in your own living room. You're gonna have four, four things to see at the same time, and then you can control which audio that you wanna listen to all through an iPad or, you know, or Android devices. That's really That's cool. cool. <laughs> I, I love the idea here, and I, I love the implementation so far, and of course, obviously, they're, they're working on it, and they've got the Kickstarter project out and uh, launched, and it's, uh, how many more days did you say? Oh, we're, Mark, we just started about five days ago, okay. and we're going until June 5th, so we're about almost, 50 days. And almost fully funded already. Yeah, we're almost already at the, almost at the goal. That's so. awesome. So, guys, go check it out and uh, make sure that, you know, if you want, if you're a cord cutter or if you're not a cord cutter, you can still take advantage mm -hmm. of this. 
and have more variety uh, with your TV watching. Uh, obviously, sports fans are going to love this. Yeah. And you said we could have this one, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us uh, for SETV.com. Uh, that's David Foster. That's Callie Lewis. <laughs> Bye, guys. Oh, no, it's, it's okay. Yeah. It's, it, people are used to kind of live demos. Um, Wi-Fi never cooperates.
I learned this move from David. She did. That's my signature move. <laughs> it's your only move. No, no, it's not. I pulled out more moves than that. <laughs> one more move. I think he has one more move. We need to do the intro. Hello, I'm Callie Lewis. <laughs> and I'm David Foster. No, wait. No, that's, that's the right. other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you guys in the, uh, the audience. We have a live audience. How are you guys? Hey, come on. It's, I know it's the end of the day. Yeah. Come on. How are you guys? Come on, let's do fun? jumping jacks. <laughs> Everybody up. Anybody want to show show <laughs> me your move? Yep. Oh, he's going like that. We got that. one over all here. All right. That's a new move. I bet you if we gave him the money box, they'd all get up and dance. <laughs> you know, the energy at NAB show here is always uh, just a, high. High level. High, it high, is. high, high, high. Except, you know, the end of the day, some people start to get, I have to admit, I had a cookie right before here. Yep. Because we had I was coffee and a cookie. The, yep. the little... Uh, the little lag. lag down there. So, <laughs> but we've been going since you know, a long uh, time. Sunday. Exactly. Uh, Brian from Red Rock Micro, yes. welcome. Hi guys, thank you very Here much. Here to bring us some awesome stuff. How are you feeling? Are you feeling the need to dance? The you know, I am at this action? point so hopped up on Red Bull <laughs> that it's possible I may have set another record for you guys. And for those that That's can't awesome. see, his legs are actually doing this back here right now. He is dancing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something like that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Welcome to Thank the you. show. Thank we've, you. Good we've to be here. We've talked to you uh, before on CES or NAB. I'm, I don't even remember. We do we do so much of this. Yeah, yeah, a couple times actually in the past, yeah. I love Red Rock Micro. Oh, you, you guys have uh, awesome gear. Uh, so share with the audience, Red Rock Micro, what do you do? Great, so we're actually in our 10th year now. I think the first year was actually at NAB 10 years ago. That's awesome. Uh, we are a US-based company. We manufacture and design equipment in Texas. Don't mess with Texas. Hey, Dallas, we're from Dallas. Yep. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah, we're right outside of Dallas, Flower Mound, if you kind of oh, know that. Oh, awesome. So come on by and visit us. I did not realize that. Yeah, we're really close by, so we're proud of that heritage. And uh, we originally started the company with the notion of how do we build professional level uh, gear and equipment and rigs but price it for individual people to actually own. So back in the dark ages, which I guess is apparently 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I was there. Yeah. You know, it was either studio budgets, studio dollars, or the things that, you know, our average people like me could afford. It was either terrible quality or just you had to rent it. And we sort of feel like there was a better way. And here we are 10 years later, we've, we've got probably over four or 500 products, uh, individual products. We've done a tremendous job and we've just loved every minute of it not only as business owners, but also as production people. We just love using our gear and it gives us so much more uh, production value. Yeah. So, all right, well, that's a great overview of the company, but uh, show us what you got here. Great, so. This looks like a, I'm not even sure what it looks like. It's like a monitor. Exactly, app. exactly. So this is something we've actually just introduced this year. I'm going to have to uh, tell you a little bit about the reason why we built it, and then okay. it's going to start to make a lot more sense. This is our Halo system, and we are trying to solve a problem that is prevalent in the industry today, which is basically around focusing. So we are uh, fortunate that we have uh, a lot of very large sensors, very high-resolution sensors. Uh, we have very fast lenses. 
these are things that contribute to this um, cinematic quality of selective focus, right? So we want you to be in focus, we want your background to be out of focus, we want to take that as a tool and move the audience's uh, vision towards wherever we want it to be. And now it's gotten so incredibly affordable that not only do high-end people uh, who we try to emulate use it, but now anybody who's got a $300 you know, Sony Alpha camera can do it as well. The problem though is that the technology and the experience required to actually use that focus effectively hasn't kept pace. So average people like me and you, if we're like gonna jump on a set and say, okay, now we're gonna use a really shallow depth of field and we're gonna sort of move people's attention from place to place, I tell you, we're not gonna do it. That's tricky, yeah. And people who do it uh, as a, for a living are finding it increasingly more difficult. You get 6K, now 8K sensors, you get people shooting really long lenses and want really shallow depth yeah. of field. So it's a problem for everybody. And you're starting to see people like Canon with their um, face tracking recognition start to poke at that using mm -hmm. uh, technology that exists today. So we wanted to solve this problem with this product, Halo. It's designed us to basically um, do automated focus tracking and do it for that range of people. So it's a combination of a great tool to use, but also um, an automated way to track focus of people. Well, um, and before you get into the, to that, why Halo? What, what does that mean to you? Uh, well, Halo is actually part of what we're going to do in oh, the okay. system. So, so you'll gonna, see it. We're going to understand it and as you go it's on. It's just as a teaser, it's a verb. Oh, and you'll see it here in a second. Okay. So oh, I don't know if you guys are actually able to, to see yeah, this yeah. Uh, interface here. So fantastic. Um, what I'm going to show you here is, first of all, it's a beautiful interface. We actually are using modern technology um, to display information about the lens. So this is telling me I have a 24 millimeter lens. It's telling me the angle of view of the lens. And as I'm dragging, this is my demo version. As I'm dragging this back and forth, it's actually showing me, oh, here we go. It's actually showing me where I'm focusing. It's telling me the distance that I'm focusing. This is a really nice way to actually visualize focus. Now, where it gets really interesting, and, and, and not right now, but in a moment, we're going to show you some B-roll of this. Okay. I'm actually going to turn on, uh, there's a device that's associated with this um, that is our Halo unit. It is the same technology that's used in autonomous cars for collision detection and avoidance. So there's no setup. You turn it on, and it has instant understanding of everything around it. Mm -hmm. And what happens is this is my demo mode. I'm going to hopefully turn this on. This is my um, fake agent here. This is, imagine, a person who's walking around in front of the camera. Okay. So number one is, as I'm actually clicking here and able to move this about, I hope, okay, here we go, um, I can actually keep this person in focus just by simply dragging my finger. I'm not doing a great job because I'm sort of holding this up for everybody, of but and it doesn't yeah, matter. it's hard to do it upside down. And well, yeah. it doesn't matter where you drag it. It's, you don't have to be on it. It's, it's, it's right. you're so just it's keeping that halo around that person. Or well, it's the it's actually this is showing me the depth of field of the lens, so you can see it's increasing as I go further out. So uh -huh. it has some understanding of the technology I'm using. Now this is really great. Uh, and of course, you can use the wheel as well to do this. This is okay. really great for someone who wants to control focus. But I'm not the most sophisticated person, and the majority of people out there aren't. So the halo notion is I can actually tap her or him, and you can see there's a halo around them. Yeah. Oh. And now actually, it's tracking focus back and forth. Oh, so nice. if I was to have a scene where there are multiple people who are moving around, and this may actually be a good time to show the B-roll. We went okay. down to our booth and shot a little bit of something for you guys. But you will actually see um, multiple folks showing up on this as dots, and I can actually click and move between those ones. Okay. So I don't know if we, we oh, go. here we go. So that's our Halo logo at the booth. This is the device that actually shows it. We can, and so uh, they're doing the same thing with that knob. Right. Uh, so we actually have, you can see two people that are moving back and forth, and they're okay. showing up on the screen. And now, simply just by um, tapping on that, I can actually, as I said, halo somebody, and they'll actually be staying in focus. So, so now you can't halo two people, obviously, right? Because they're going to be in different parts of the the, the right, area. Right. But we can go between them, right? So if okay. the, the great thing is, if you can understand pressing a button on a dot and pressing a button on another dot, now you are you can f pull focus. And the great, the really cool thing, if you think about this, is you don't have to worry about the actor hitting their marks exactly. Maybe the different takes, it's not quite the same. All you need to do is just simply touch the dot, and we know where they are. How now, what about? I'm sorry. Well, uh, yeah, before you, I, I think you're moving on a little bit, but how are they actually tracking it? So that, there was a little bit of a uh, device at the start. 
is a, is a, a thing called, we call it the Explorer. And what it does is it scans the room and it's, it's what we call scene detection. So again, think about it like a car, right? You turn uh, oh, it on okay. That's what and it yeah. knows, it sort of tracks yeah. everything and then can pick out people and then it will show you here in real time where they are and their location. Okay. Well, and what about the speed of the person moving? Like, is that, you know, affect anything? Like, if they're moving running or walking or... It makes no difference. So, again, they would obviously move a little bit quicker. But, again, if you understand the core technology that we have, it's kind of an advanced laser-based technology. If, it's, if the technology we're using is to do collision avoidance and detection, you can imagine the kind of the real-time aspect of what's going on there. You've got cars coming at you, and God only knows what yeah. speed. Right. Yeah, actually, I've seen some of that technology. It's very, very impressive Super from the cool. back end. Yeah. They can map yeah. out all kinds of things and right. see people from way ahead. So. That's the system that you're using. Yeah, you're so this cool. is Halo. Uh, of course, I quit out there just <laughs> briefly as I, as I love. We'll but pull it back um, so this is actually something, it's brand new for NAB. We're previewing, it's the second day people have ever seen it. Um, it's going to be released later this year, and our target is somewhere around two to five thousand dollars. So it's imminently affordable compared with anything out there that do something like this. And so, how does it connecting to your camera? This actually is all completely wireless. It's completely so wireless. So okay. I could be com uh, far away from the camera up to I think it's a mile line of sight range. Oh wow! And a lot of people who are you know professional focus pullers are at the monitor doing their yeah. things, but. Average people like you and I, we might actually mount this on the monitor, select our, our halo, our person, and then just we're off and running and they're going to be in focus. Fantastic. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. I'm impressed. Yeah. I want it. Great. <laughs> what about you guys? Yeah? Oh, this gentleman here, I I'm can tell he likes it. Like thumbs up but they're they, they need some cookies hey guys there are cookies right right over there just just so you know if you need some sugar <laughs> <laughs> brian thank you so much oh my pleasure you guys thank you <laughs> where uh what's the website uh redrockmicro.com and if for anybody here who wanted to see a more sophisticated demo we actually have a working one down in our booth in central hall fantastic thank you check, check. and thank you for joining us here at nab show live 2015. And i guess we're going over to the cash booth again Right. Okay. Oh, are we? That's what I, I think I just heard oh, that in my ear. Okay. <laughs> Take a look at the uh, cash booth, but come back here for more. Geekbeat.tv slash NAB show. I don't know. Well, now I'm not. Well, now I am. Sweet. What happened? Yeah. There you go. Oh yeah. Wait, you can hear me already. In a world. <laughs> Where we say in a world. <laughs> no, it's only two, right? <laughs> this is Jonathan LaPointe. Mm. <laughs> no, really, those are awesome. He said, yes, you do want one. Oh, wow. Yeah, search engines real quick. Just my name and email. We haven't talked for a long time. No, we haven't talked in two months. Yeah. Is that, is that a Pittsburgh thing? I live in Pittsburgh now. Oh, you do? For a long time. Yeah, I was in uh, out in Bridgeport in like late 28. Can you just stop by for a minute? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where is it now? Uh, it's down in uh, Whoa. Uh, yeah, talk more. There you go. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm going Dave, to slap you Dave, I don't think that sounds as cool days. as you think it does. <laughs> when you say, <laughs> it's always in a I world. I do not think that sounds as cool as you think it does. In a world. <laughs> I feel like singing in front of this mic, do but you? I won't. <laughs> 
Do it. Let's, no, I won't. let's hear it. No, you don't want to. Come on, David, start it. Get him going. No, get uh, him going. Get him going. Don't start, David, um, please. <laughs> I was thinking uh, of a song. Um, no, don't. What? You can't think of a song? That never happens. <laughs> yeah, you always have songs I ready to go. I want to ride my bicycle. All right, you do that. <laughs> what? <laughs> what what was that? Yeah. <laughs> so podcasting, it's fun. Uh, Rob, let's talk. Hi. Mic check. Uh, Mary had a little lamb on the side. She had some mashed potato and green beans. I can't. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I can't hear him. You at can't all. hear me. I can't hear him either. Uh, I can hear oh, Mac. One I'm one thousand. Yeah. Feedback, yeah. David. Their, their oh, feedback. In the airpiece. Okay. Now I hear me on public I'm giving. Speaker. I'm giving you feedback on on what I can and can't hear. Okay. <laughs> I'm giving you trouble as well. I brought my own mic. <laughs> oh, this is. You brought the mic. Yeah. You bring the mic and the earpiece. <laughs> Dave Curley. <laughs> we could talk about my son's podcast. <laughs> Your son has a podcast? <laughs> He's six years old. Yeah, Port yeah Porter's podcast. Uh, oh, nice. He was that about Queen that you he, were singing? He answers people's questions. Yes. Oh, really? Yes. No, uh, it was. It was Queen. Ben says, more Queen, more Queen. His son has a podcast. My six younger son. Yes. Yeah, Porter. Oh, six. Porter's podcast. Nice. Yeah. He, how old? Six. He's six. He started when he was five. He's five and a half. He came to me and he said, "He goes, I, I want a podcast." Why did he wait so, so long to get podcast. started? <laughs> like, yeah. You know what? I tried Slacker. to get his older brother to podcast. So people are like, "Oh, you just pushed your son into it." I'm like, "No, he came to me and said, wow. I want a podcast." Well, he's surrounded by. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, and, and here's, he said the sweetest thing last year, right before summer. He goes, "He goes, I'm going to podcast every day this summer, and I'm going to make a million dollars." Oh wow. Nice. Oh, wait, wow. why is that sweet? Because that's what a lot a of other podcasters that sign up <laughs> yeah, but, say. But, but you just said on our live version that if monetization is your main thing. Oh, no, he had been podcasting for a couple of months. Okay, okay. Oh, well, a couple of months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A million dollars a couple Actually, months. Actually, that's all it took me yep. is yeah. a couple of months. So, yeah. Alex, sorry. Alex, can you test, please? Check, check. We are glad the Dauphin is so pleasant with us. Check, 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 check in the mic. I don't actually have to, like, when we what did right. you have for breakfast? Like, ask yes. fake questions in order to <laughs> get you to talk. Yeah, I do want to talk about what I had for breakfast, though. Okay, what would you have for breakfast? I don't remember. Hello, that, that Indiana. Pitiful. <laughs> Apple Jacks, that was all that left what in the press What did I have room. for breakfast? I got up there two minutes late. I don't remember. Had, uh, vultures in the bacon press and room. eggs. Boom. Everything no, was gone. No bacon. Wow. I no he has bacon. never eaten bacon. In his I have life. never eaten Ever? bacon. Ever. In his life. Ever. Can Is that you like a religious that? thing? I have never. You are lucky you don't have a bacon. geek card because it would be revoked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's bacon ice cream. You can oh, get my bacon word. Ice cream. That sounds That's nasty. Not, I would not put that in front of him as his first bacon so That no. sounds or, nasty. Or bacon jelly, or, <laughs> you know, it would have to be just nice, crispy piece of bacon. Yes. But I'm in nice. Vegas, so what happens I, in Vegas? I have considered doing a restaurant that's just all bacon. All bacon. Like, there's not a single thing totally on the restaurant do that. that doesn't have bacon in it. Alex, Dave <sighs> Curley says he loves you, and I think I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> I will be your sous chef. Can yeah, we do there we this go. together? I think so. Uh, you know, Dallas would be a good for place for oh, bacon. Oh, yes. Then you move to us. Yeah, Come no. on, let's do it. Dallas would be a very good place for to bacon. Do it. So bacon. in Western Pennsylvania. This is what we're talking like about bacon. now. And call it Just Bacon. Just Bacon. Just, just bacon. bacon. I actually like the name. Just Bacon. Yeah. Just so Bacon. The, now this is the And people will assume bacon. you're a bakery. <laughs> <laughs> time to do what, Dave Curley? They're a... Yeah, time to make the dot, dot, dot. I, I don't know what that means. Time That's to make the bacon. Start. Time to make the donuts. You never Wait, heard What the... time is it? Time to make four. Time to make the donuts. Like, what? You know, T minus one. Uh, yeah. T minus one? Said, oh. Okay. In, okay. In 29, 28, 27. <laughs> in a world. I'm on the panel. Welcome back to NAB Show Live 2015. I'm Callie Lewis. And I'm uh, still David Foster. <laughs> Last I checked. I'm excited about this panel that we have today to wrap up the day here at NAB Show. It is all about podcasting, about the new media world. You know, that's what's great about uh, NAB Show, right? Is It's been going for like, what, 30 years or something? Mm -hmm. 
It's been around for forever, and they are embracing, obviously, the new media world as well as the traditional media world. So we're going to talk a lot about a lot of stuff. So hang on in there and ask questions in the chat room. Uh, first and foremost, let, let me introduce you, everybody. You know David Foster. Uh, we'll get to you in a second. Starting way down there, Rob Walsh from Libsyn. I'm Rob Walsh from Libsyn, as you said. I'm a host <laughs> of Today in iOS and Podcast 411 and Casey Startup 411 and The Feed. So there's a few different ones in there. Yes, and you've been around. You know what? I think we need to, to do a competition here. Who's been around the podcasting world for the longest? I lose. So, uh, as a listener <laughs> or a, as a listener lose, and broadcaster? <laughs> 2004. 2004. Late 2004. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Leslie when did I start? Samuels I started... from Become a Blogger and Learn with Leslie. Yeah, when did I start podcasting? I think I started yesterday. Didn't you say back in 2010? Oh, yeah, 2010. You're a late I'm a late bloomer. I came <laughs> to the game late, but I'm still here. And of course, we have Alex Lindsay from Pixel Core. I think we have to defi define how what podcasting is. Oh, get all technical. Well, when, no, when, when did you start creating audio or video content? Oh, video content. So, no, so I I started creating. <laughs> Uh, regular video content, either daily or weekly, in 2001. Ooh. Oh, uh, you're wow! wow. <laughs> but, it, but there was no pod. There was no iPod to <laughs> pod to it to cast to it. So, so there was just the web, and there was no bandwidth. Uh, so, so then there, everything podcasting. was in little flash documents. Yes. And wow. David Foster from you're the impartial geek. Uh, mm -hmm. You are with Geeks Life, uh, but you, you've been podcasting for a while as well. Yes, since about 2009. Dabbling oh. in it. So you yes. even beat me. Wow. I know. Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. So we have all walks of life here. We have, uh, you know, everybody has been around the podcasting world for a long time, doing very different things as well. You, you didn't know? say how long you've been podcasting. Oh. Yeah, wow. <laughs> we care about that, too. That's You're right. not getting out of that one. <laughs> uh, since 2005, so, oh. for me. Okay. So I guess I'm third runner-up. <laughs> Well, yeah, I third runner-up. <laughs> and unfortunately, there's no third runner-up prize, so. <laughs> so what, what does that mean for me? Huh? Wow. Absolutely guess, nothing. Yeah. You're, you're just, just, you're just you're lucky just to last. be here. I At guess. least you have a beautiful pink shirt. Why, thank you very much. Yes, yes. Seven I points. I win the pink shirt competition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yes, you know, podcasting is a, uh, let's, let's define podcasting, because a lot of people still think, podcasting is audio. So some people define it as audio, some people define it as video. Uh, how do you guys define it, Alex? You, you said... Uh, I, I think of it as, as periodic content. You know, so it's, you know, the, at this point, I mean, I think that at some point it made sense to call it podcasting because there were, you know, we were sent, most of the work was being sent to iPods. But you're really talking about an online distribution of periodic content. And that can be audio, it can be video, you know, either one. I think the, um, we really didn't we did a little bit of audio first, but we really almost started with video. Um, but we actually we started with flash, <laughs> like little, <laughs> nice. little flash animations <laughs> and little bits and pieces. But, but I think that uh, um, I think that's the important thing to think about, especially as we move forward. You know, I think we're kind of getting post, post pod. Yeah. Well, periodic uh, caster doesn't really sound the same though. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Periodic <laughs> casting. Periodic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Periodic. That casting. doesn't sound. No. <laughs> what do we call it these days? Well, I, I mean, it's. Podcasting, it's that's the name. It's always going to be the name. Is it's it? Not, yeah, it will. It's never going to change. It's, Leo it's, Laporte went on this no. big hype to change it to netcasting. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah that, that didn't, didn't go so well. Work. But then it was nanocast, and there was mm -hmm. this cast or that cast. It's audio or video content that's episodic, mm -hmm. on demand. I think the on demand part's the most important one because that puts the user in control and not the producer. Right. And I think that's what separates it. But the name is going to be called podcast because Apple calls it podcast, Microsoft calls it podcast, even Facebook now you can say you're a podcast. All the media companies call it podcast. I think it's game over, forget anything about the name, that's it. <laughs> You Leslie. heard it here first. There you go. <laughs> Actually, I wrote, wait, wait, wait. Wait, I, I wrote an article that said that in 2007. <laughs> but I, but oh, wow. that's that's that said the name was over in 2007. So. Yeah, I but, remember that article. Well, and I think, I think that where we're looking, you know, the ultimate, we're constantly seeing the convergence. You know, where, yes. where when we started, we, were, we had these, these little SD videos at best, right. badly shot. Yeah. Um, and, and, and there was TV, you know, and doing its HD thing. And now we have podcasts that are going out in 4K, um, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the, that are being produced at very high quality with very high quality cameras. I mean, a lot has changed in the, in the decade that from 2005 to 2015, we can go out and buy an H, a, a, a 4K camera right. for a couple hundred dollars, yeah. I mean, well, you know, $500. In, in, in 2005, 
what kind of, how big would your camera have been compa to compare to this camera? Yeah. Right. I mean, you'd have been over the shoulder. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, and right. nowhere near 240 frames a second. Yeah. So, so but yeah, the, uh, so I think that, um, but we're also seeing the broadcast media, and, you know, moving, moving towards all the VOD, moving, I mean, we, you know, HBO has cut the cord, you know, Netflix never had the cord, um, CBS is cutting the cord, all these other, you know, and we're going to continue to see that where all, the, all these brands are now breaking away from traditional, you know, the set drop box. And so we're now very much in the same space, you know, I, th I think, which I think is good. I think it's, it's an no, interesting it, mix. And, and this is where we were looking back in 2005, 2006 when I started was, you know, the, this is a great online world, but it, the goal is to be convergent with old media, traditional media, and new media, and find a way to all work together and grow together, right? And, and that's where we're actually seeing that happen now, uh, and, and that's exciting. But you know, audio, uh, I feel like took a dip. Maybe others have have an opinion here, but I feel like you know when. When I first started, you know, the 2005, Apple released the first video iPod, and video went crazy. Um, audio kind of took a dip, and now we're, we're seeing a huge increase in audio podcasting now well, and uh, I think in terms too, of advertising and listenership. And, too, like you've got this whole thing happening in the, the cars with the yeah. – you're going to have podcast players and stuff in cars now, so people are going to be downloading – or not downloading, but listening to them or streaming them in their car, however they're going to listen to them. So you're going to be able to get wider listener base you know, in the, with the audio because you're not going to be able to drive down the road still watching – any kind of video. Well, and, I mean, you can, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not do. safe. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Until we get self-driving well, cars, yeah. of course. Yeah. We've yeah. never seen a change. I mean, you know, we, 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 it's been uh, always, I thought that video would be the future, I, I admit, and really, really focused on video in the beginning. But the, the, the shows, Mac Break, um, This Week in Photography, which is very mm -hmm. odd to have a photography show that's audio. Uh, yeah. We record it in video, and we post it up in video, but the vast majority, 99, 90, 95% of the people are listening to it. Um, and that's the on-demand versus the yeah. live streaming. And a yeah. lot of us are doing live streaming plus on-demand for the same exact show. Yeah. And, and it creates, you know, obviously there's a hybrid problem where you, you start showing things to people and when you're listening it doesn't sound quite the same. Uh, but I think that um, what we like about the live experience is, is that it, it generates an, an interaction with the audience, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, that's what you get out of that. And we, you know, people, we primarily a live streaming company, so that's what we do. And, and uh, uh, but when a client comes in, I, you know, they say, well, they want to stream live. I'm like, there's three reasons, sports, news, or audience interaction. If you don't have one of those three, you should just record it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not, you know, it's a lot of stress, it's a lot of risk, it's a lot of other things. And, and so, but the on-demand makes more sense. So let's talk a little bit, let's dive deeper into that that idea of recording and that like of doing on demand or sorry live and then releasing it as you said sometimes when you have visuals it falls flat to the to the user when they're listening on demand i feel like almost we need to be putting more effort uh, into creating two different types of content y'all's thoughts well, I I think that some of the, I'm sorry. Yeah, no. We were, I, I that, uh, we You're in the center for a reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I, I think that the, the long form content, most of the time, the, 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 really the, the issue that we talk a lot about in the office is, is uh, um, content density. Yeah. You know, and it's really hard to create the content density in video at the, at the kind of price point that we're at right now. So, you know, if, if we had $10 million an episode or $3 million an episode, we can create a lot of content yes. density in that, in that process. But at thousands or, or, or less per, per episode, um, you know, we get into a situation where 30 minutes is a long, is a long space to fill in, in an interesting way. Um, in addition to that, video is a, uh, it's a monotasking thing to do, which I think actually undercuts a lot of the you know, um, consumption. Yeah. You, know, you can multitask with, with audio in a way that you can't do with it video safely most of the time. Um, and uh, so I think that, that provides a different opportunity. I think that we, I like doing videos that are very short, you know, and then audio that's a much, you know, longer form. We stream a lot of stuff that's longer form, but I think that's the, that's yeah. the one piece. And yeah. the, on yeah. the audio side, too, the longer the form content, the, the much longer form content is the more popular content. Right. Yeah. Right. When I look at the shows on Lipson that have over 100,000 downloads per episode, it was like 66% were 50 minutes or longer. 
Uh, oh yeah, well, when people get into the into audio, when they're listening to it especially, I think that they want it to last. I mean, they're, you're filling well, that's up. That's because that's bath time. You're filling up time. You're filling, <laughs> up, you're, you're filling up the drive to Pittsburgh, or yeah. you're filling up the, you know, those, yeah. those things. And so when, when you, if you make it 15 minutes, it's annoying. Well, now if you're driving it. in Pittsburgh, it may better be an hour and a half then, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, but I, I think it's also significant what you were talking about in terms of creating um, the, the type of content that you're creating, making it optimized for the medium that people are going to be receiving it as. So because I, I know I listen to a lot of podcasts where it's recorded as video, but you get the, the audio stream and they're describing something, but you don't really know exactly what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I think if, if in order to do both, you have to be very skilled at taking that visual medium and translating it in, into a way that the person that's listening to just the audio can understand what you're talking about. I think, I think also with episodic content, and this is, I think, a challenge for broadcasters, I think it's a challenge for podcasters, is thinking about a, generating a conversation. I've, mm -hmm. I really have come to believe that you know, content is no longer king, that community is king, mm -hmm. and what yes. you have to do is, and it always was, it's just people didn't really re get that, you know? But I think that, um, that figuring out how to have, like one of the things that we are working on with a lot of our stuff that we're working, you know, coming out soon is, how do we have a conversation go on all week? You know, so we've got a live, we've got a big recording that we're going to do, but we're going to put out little things and little news and get interactions and do all kinds of stuff in between. So that conversation is for the people who are really serious about yeah. it. And there's something, you know, 80% of the folks will just be happy to hit play, you know, but there's 20% that, that, that move the entire event. And yeah. I'd like to see, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm curious. You're, you're talking about putting out those little pieces of content in between. Yeah. Is that primarily video content or audio content? It How are you be, guys doing it? So we're looking at video, con you know, short bits and pieces of video content, links that you can, so if we're talking about, um, uh, you know, Max, mm -hmm. for instance, I talk a lot about Apple. Um, <laughs> You know, we can be putting out some of the news links and some of the clips and some of the other things, and let people start discussing those mm. and becoming part of that. And then, and then by be, by doing that, you can start creating a feedback loop where you're referring back to those things. So people get that they're yeah. being heard, you know, and 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 start to kind of turn that. And then during the live show, uh, chat functions are really important. Like, you know, that's one of the things the live show can do, and a, a long live show can do really well. Is people get warmed up and they start asking questions and they may have comments, and that's being brought. That's affecting the show. Yeah. Um, we've built a bunch of our own tools to do that, um, so we can, people can ask questions and stuff right. like that. But, but anything like that makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's. Uh, I love what you said. Content isn't king. Community, Community is king. And and I've been going that same exact direction. That's the number one thing I do this for, is right. the community, right? And so uh, and you, you're the geek wrangler. You've tagged yourself that for, for a while, right? <laughs> and that's all about the community itself. So talk about uh, you know, things that you've seen that work with community, uh, a focus there. Well, yeah, just, just creating, not creating content that is outside of your community. I mean, you're, you're bringing them into the conversation because you are having a conversation with your community. You're not trying to have a conversation with a demographic that's outside of it uh, because then they just don't get it. So you just kind of, and, and they'll tell you exactly what they want you to cover, what you they want you to talk about. And so one thing that we're working on actually is we're going to start recording our, uh, as we create our audio podcast. So we're going to have a 15 minute segment where we talk to the audience and then we're going to record a section of the audio podcast and they're going to be, that's our live show. So we're you know, taking questions and then answering them as part of the audio and stuff. So just kind of integrating all of that and, and you know, building the community, so. Yeah, yeah community I, is super important. Okay. Are you seeing anything on that end? Yeah, I, the best way to have your show be promoted, and really the only marketing method that's ever really worked is word of mouth marketing. Mm -hmm. And without a community, you have no word of mouth. And if you have a community, they're much, much more likely to start telling other people, hey, come on in, come right. on in, come on in, check this show out. You know, if you actually talk to a lot of the biggest podcasters, what they do to promote, they'll tell you really nothing. They let their <laughs> audience do it for them. Right. And they concentrate on just working on getting good content. Because you still have to have good content or you won't have a community. Because a the community there around a show that's not very good isn't going to be a show very yeah. long. <laughs> well, and exactly. there's a difference between creating listeners and creating what, I, I guess a lot of people, I don't know about the word, but a lot of people call them evangelists. You get people who are really into your content and the fact that you're connecting with them and they tell people about you, you know, and, and so you're, you are, you're, you're building that through word of mouth and you don't have to advertise or whatever because you're not trying to go out there and just get listeners that are going to one time listen. Mm -hmm. You're just cultivating that. And, and, and increasing that 20% of people 
people that you mentioned, Alex, of the 20% who interact and the, and the 80% who just listen. In working to increase that creates more evangelists mm -hmm. and creates more, more uh, word of mouth. And, and it's little things. It's super simple things like calling out community members yeah. for making a great comment or doing something nice to, uh, with other community members and just creating that connection. Yeah. Right. One, one of the things that I've started doing is where you get um, listener feedback. You have them call in and right. leave a question or just leave a comment and you play it live on the air. They love that mm -hmm. because they feel as if now I'm a part of this yeah. as opposed to I'm just listening to what you're creating. And yeah. those things get, get into the, they, they really get into the viewers or yeah. the listener's head. You know, like I, you, know, you see things, you know, you're constantly watching something like uh, Jimmy Fallon or Conan or, or O'Brien and they're always showing funny pictures, you know, of juxtapositions <laughs> or yeah. something. And there's, then I'll see stuff and I, I, I want to go over and take the photo just because yeah. I'm like, um, I, I never get around to actually sending it to them, but I, take, <laughs> I have a lot of funny photos because it's just like I've been, I've been trained, you know, yeah. like the, you know, you know, to, to, to take, take pictures of anything that looks really weird, you know, like yeah. get that photo, you know. So. Well, and that's the thing, like, you know, when, as you build a community, just, it's just being part of it. I mean, a lot of people, they just constantly pump content out all over the, the internet, but they're not part of the community. They're not responsible responding to comments, they're not spending time getting to know their community, and I think that's a, a huge disconnect with some content creators. I do think it's a, I think it's a challenge to, you, you definitely want to listen to the community, but I think it's often a challenge to also lead the community, yeah. you know, so we're going to move this direction a little bit, right. slow, you know, slowly, you know, uh, but, but we're going to point this Or quickly. Or, or like we did recently. <laughs> yeah, very, or very recently. Very quickly. Yeah, 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 we're going this way, you know, so. Grab but, the, but grab the photos, that, kids, I, we're moving. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I, I actually, some of the things that you guys are doing is quite, are quite interesting. I know you're talking about even getting the community involved in creating some of that content. Yeah, mm -hmm. what we're calling Geek's Corner. Yeah. So uh, as opposed to, uh, you know, the beauty of new media is the two-way conversation. So as opposed to just pushing out our passions and pushing out our content, creating a Geek's Corner where people can bring their passions into us and to the rest of the community as well. Uh, we're still working out the details, yeah. to be honest, of how that works well, uh, but having people be able to share their content with us, not just promotion, hey, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, but really engaging mm -hmm. in that, that community and, and sharing those thoughts with everybody. And there's a feedback loop that, that happens exactly. there in the process. That as you're developing it, you're getting feedback from mm -hmm. them, and, and they're seeing that you're listening to the feedback. Yeah. I think that really does help to enhance the community. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things I've learned over the last nine, ten years that I've been doing this is people are freaking amazing, <laughs> you know? I mean, you go and you talk to people, and, and that's one of the things we love about events like this is we get to talk to people and hear their stories. I love people's stories. And just finding out uh, what they do, and you, I mean, in your own community, you will find people who do more amazing things than you do. Yeah. And just finding a way to feature that and to, to talk about that, that's my, my golden egg, right? <laughs> like, that's yeah, what absolutely. I love. <laughs> well, and I, and, I, and I do think that uh, a lot of times when, we, when we've done a lot of that, you know, within the Pixel Core and, and some of our yeah. training and so on and so forth, and, and one of the things that's fascinating is you give people a little bit of guidance, like, you know, hold the camera this way, turn, and you'd be amazed at how much good content you get back. You know, yes. you know, you know the, because they've got, all, they've got all the interesting things to do, mm -hmm. and, and it's just a little bit of, you know, um, as far as getting, you know, user generated content, yeah. you know, back. And I think that. You know, re starting to rethink this. I mean, podcasters, I think it comes naturally. YouTubers, it comes naturally. But I think even in broadcast, we're really, you know, they're grappling with, they talk to us about it every day. They're grappling with, okay, so how do I add social to what I'm doing? Yeah. You know, and, and figuring out ways. And, and there are so many interesting things to be done with broadcast. I mean, there's so much, you know, there's, when we look at content, I mean, we, when we think of the little bit that ends up broadcasted, there are, there's all this other content and all these other interesting pieces of, how that got made that I think we, we leave out right now yeah. mm -hmm. that can really incorporate the community. Yeah, now you work with a lot of big big company names. Um, what are you seeing, you know, where are you seeing the future of the, the merge that we talked about earlier and, and the combination? Is there is something that they're doing, the big companies, that we need to be paying attention to as smaller broadcasters? Well, I think that one of them, a lot of them have pretty, it's, it started off pretty chaotic, I have to admit. We've been, you know, doing services for, you know, uh, a long, 10 years. And in the beginning, social, the social media, um, uh, 
you know, coordinator or the social media manager was like some intern from college that just got out and knew what Twitter was. You know, you know, you know, it was like, you know, that, like that's, that's, where, that's how it started. Yeah. And then there was just like this mass chaos. And, and then, you know, but anyway, and it really was like, like witch doctors, you know, you know, like then, and then we will shake this and then people will show up, you know, you know, and, and, uh, and so, um, and people are getting, you know, with, we have better measurement tools yeah. now, we have better um, feedback tools, we're, we're now starting to, you know, get a be better idea of what is what makes a difference, you know, mm -hmm. and so I think that um, a lot of the broadcasters and a lot of folks that we work with are, you know, starting to get more scientific. It's still, it's still kind of a, it's a crazy thing. Like, you go into an event, we've gone into some events and we expect nobody to show up and then yeah. there's 100,000 people <laughs> you know, watching, you know, you know, and you don't, you know, it's just not something you, so we treat every event like it's going to be 100,000 because we have no idea, yeah. you know, but I think that, um, so I can't say that we, you know, we scientifically know what those things are. Um, I think that again, it's regular content. You know, figuring out regular content, and the important thing is regular content for broadcasters. Regular content that's not on TV. That, you know, so how do I add? You know, to add to what you saw on TV. Um, Bill Maher is really good at that. You know, yeah. he's got his whole thing that happens afterwards. Um, but I think that, you know, and um, but how do we take extend that experience and make sure that we're generating that community around our product? You know, whether that product is a network, whether that product is an, a show, um, so that we always have that community that we can, you know, that becomes a core, you know. Right. And I think magazines made a big mistake. You know, a lot of the print industry made a huge mistake in not capitalizing on online. They were so afraid of online, I think, mm -hmm. that they just kept on printing. <laughs> and they had, they, and then they went, when they had 6 million, 10 million um, subscribers, that was the time. Mm -hmm. You know, to convert those mm -hmm. to something online and give them extra content, and uh, and and now they're you know now that they've lost, you know, so much ground, it's very hard for them to turn that back around Indeed. again. I love experimenting. You know, taking things, taking ideas that you, you may see somebody do something with, and then maybe taking it to the le next level. Mm -hmm. uh, Leslie, is there anything that you've just completely experimented with that turned out to be a good thing? Uh, you know, any experiences there? Yeah, with my podcast specifically, yeah. some of the things that I've done is actually, and this kind of goes back to what we were talking about before, asking my audience about a direction that I should go. Uh, and actually, even from the inception of my podcast, I started my podcast and I was like, okay, this is episode one of the podcast that doesn't even have a name as yet. <laughs> and I actually got them involved in the process mm -hmm. of naming the podcast episode and they came up with the name Learning with Leslie. And in the beginning, I didn't like it, but people started giving feedback, and then I started to like it. Yeah. Um, so just involving them in that process, that's something that went very well. And I've done that a few times along this journey, just getting their feedback because, and, and letting them know um, that I don't really necessarily have all of the answers. And when they see that, they connect with me even more. One of the things, one of the things that has really gone well with me, and I've not done this a lot, but when I'm struggling with something, I would literally just record a podcast episode talking about the struggle mm -hmm. even before having the solution. And whenever I do something like that, the response is overwhelming. Yeah. Now, that's not something you want to do every week. No. <laughs> I'm just struggling this week like I was last week. But just, just letting them see that vulnerability, yeah. um, they really respond to that very well. Indeed. What about you, David? Any experimentations that have turned out well or bad? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I always did that too, as uh, you know, taking feedback from, like I, we did Facebook applications, and I know this is a little bit different, but like building the community and taking feedback, like what do you want, what do you know? Like we have the in name of the robot. In terms of features. In terms of yeah. features, right. That's a great and we're way. doing that with the, the robot as well, you know, name yeah. the robot on, as our logo. Yeah. So just getting them involved in the process because then then it's like creating that evangelist. You're create you're getting people that are connected in a level like, hey, I I was part of this creating this. I was part of yeah. building this and I know these people. They're approachable, they're real people, they're getting involved, they take me seriously, I take them seriously, you know, and so it's just like this the cult community community cultivating. It's it's what I've been doing for, for many years and yeah. it's always served me well. And it makes it harder for them to leave, quite frankly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I decided the name of this podcast, I helped, you know, <laughs> decide which direction is gonna go. I'm not just gonna leave it like that. So I think it's powerful. Rob, anything to add there? Uh well Today in iOS used to be today in iPhone, and when I was trying to figure out the name, I sent four names to the guys at Apple and let them choose it, and then it got featured. So that worked out well for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's always helpful, right? Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. So uh, we were talking um, in, in your interview earlier um, today about where podcasting is going, right? right. And, and mobile is something that we specifically targeted as, yeah, podcasting, of course, is going mobile. We've right. touched on that a little bit, but let's dive a little I mean, deeper yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, I always hear, oh, it's the car, it's the car, it's the car coming up in the future, but right. the car is a slow, slow yeah. progression. They are. Well, they have to go through all these legislation yeah. and, and well, well, not, so much. Not only that, we had a session today, a panel session, there was a couple hundred people or a hundred and something people in the room, and I said, how many people have bought a new cell phone in the last year? Yeah. And like almost th a quarter or three quarters of the hands or whatever, a lot of people. And I said, how many people bought a new car in the last year? And it was like two or three hands. And, and so it's a very long progression. Yeah. The mobile has really changed podcasting, and, and it really has shifted a lot to audio. I mean, here's a, this is really amazing. I went into iTunes on Saturday, and I looked at the top 200 episodes in iTunes. Do you know what the number, where the highest ranked video one was in the top 200? Zero, there wasn't. Wow. There wasn't. Not wow. one top episode in iTunes podcast section was, I, I thought I was looking in the wrong section. <laughs> I, I actually went, oh, I'm like, okay, I must have clicked the audio only. No, I'm, nope, I clicked on all. I went, wow. found the first video one that was featured and uh, the top video one, it was an Apple podcast. It's the front of the new and notable. It's like number 17 in the, t in the TV wow. subgenre. So I have, a, I have a question in terms of the reach of podcasts. Do you guys find that it's something that it's still uh, popular just among the geeks. I mean, are regular no. people consuming podcasts yes. quite quite frequently? Because I find that I speak to a lot of people, and they're not even sure what a podcast is. Well, you live in Michigan, right? Well, yeah, in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't. Count. I'm just I'm teasing. Sorry. Yeah, I'm just teasing. <laughs> yeah. Barren strings, isn't that what you said? <laughs> Barren <Well>, strings. <laughs> yeah. You know, we were talking earlier, and in, in the no, over it's about 69, 70 percent of the podcast top downloads on, in our, on Libsyn mm -hmm. are either comedy or education. Oh, wow. yeah. Tech is now like one of the smallest subcategories. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to become a really comedian down. now. A, a comedian that teaches. That, a comedian that, that teaches. teaches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 yeah. that also that sings. teaches comedy. <laughs> that yeah. Sings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, uh. What about you, Alex? Well, you know, I think that podcasting is still a very, very small percentage of the, yeah. of the average population. I, but, but I think it's, it's a very, a very small percentage is still tens of millions of people. Yeah. It's, it's a big market and a very valuable market there. I think that one of the things that, that's interesting is, is that it tends to be more valuable because people are, are listening to long form, right. they're connected to a community. So I think from, a, from an advertiser's perspective, I mean, I, th I think you see a lot of advertisers that are, that are forward thinking or, are yeah. investing somewhere in, in advertising on podcasting because, because it's a great medium. You know, especially if you have, if, if the host believes in your product, is talking about the product, you know, um, you know, in line. Uh, I think those things turn out to be very, very successful. Yeah. Oh, let's talk about money, <laughs> advertising. Uh, we monetization. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> we all fairly kind of probably dabble in the same types of advertising: host endorsement, uh, you know, building the ad into the show itself. Uh, what's working now? What's not? Leslie? Me, I actually don't do any sponsored sponsorships or anything of that sort. I have my own products that I've created um, and I funnel people that way. I want people to come on my email list and once they're on my email list, they can go through my email sequence. And a part of that is you know, my university that I've created. So I actually don't do any of the sponsorships and I prefer to kind of keep it all in house, at least for now. Maybe that's something that I'll dabble with in the future. Yeah. Um, but for now, my own products, my own services. Sometimes I do some affiliate promotions yeah. and so on, but it's mostly just the content and then getting them into my system. Okay, David? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, it's, uh, it's bittersweet because some of the advertisers that we've had to use, you know, you, you, they kind of help you get off the ground, but I ideally would like to just have, you know, the, our community funded, like Patreon type, uh, where we're just producing content and, and people are paying for the content and access to uh, our academy and special features so that we don't have to. Because one thing that like we were doing is I'm, I'm doing an advertisement for a product that I've never touched. I don't know anything about it. Yet I'm telling people, this is awesome. Check it out. I'm like, yeah, I just did that for money. You know? and so it just doesn't feel right. And so I like the more organic. Um, you know, I'm, I am actually using a product. I love it. 
try it if you want to, that kind of thing. And it's ideal to do that, absolutely, uh, and that's the ultimate goal. Sometimes, you know, as a business, you can't rely solely on those because, well, that's that's and, the and, you know pie in the sky. But and one of the things that we've done is is there's two things that that we do with a lot of our advertising. One is is there's if there's organizations that we really like companies and so on and so forth, we go after them. Right. Like say, you know, this is a great show for you because yes. we use your product. We like your product. We will talk about it not as a commercial, mm -hmm. but as fanboys. You know, you know, you know, like you know, you know, and that's works out well. so much that's a, that's, a, that's a really good so so we'll let them know that. And then the second thing we do is we like to have a lot of advertisers that are not connected to our industry. Yeah. So mm. so we like the Fords, we like the you know uh, Audible in a lot of ways. That that isn't Directly connected to but what we're doing. Related to yeah, it's related. The people, the people that are interested are exactly. interested in what we're doing, but but it's it's not a. We never feel like it creates a conflict. Well, yeah. it, it can be psychographic and demographic. As I hold on to my Warby Parker glasses and <laughs> rub my hairy shaven head, um, <laughs> you know, there are sometimes you can work those things subtly into your show. You know, there's one podcast that I listen to that I think does an excellent job with that, and that's the Startup Podcast because I'm, I actually look forward to listening to, to the ads. The ads. I, <laughs> I, I hear the music for the ads and I'm like, okay, what are they gonna say next? And it's actually very much related to something that the audience would be interested in. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it works very well, yeah. depending on how you do it. At Lipson, you, you help that's, your podcasters get advertising on their yeah, show. Right. That's my p bigger part of my day job is right. working between the advertisers and the producers and listening to the ads. So I get to hear some pretty good ads, sometimes not so good ad reads. <laughs> um, but the best one is when I send out an email to an, a podcaster and I say, hey, uh, I had this recently with Jack Threads. Hey, Jack Threads is interested in advertising on your show. And she wrote, back, I've been using them already. I love them. And now, here is a person, I don't have to convince them anymore. Yeah. They know the yeah. product. I don't have to send You're them the like bullet points. Said, a fan. Yeah, I mean, they're a fan, and this advertiser was interested in them. So now you've got a marriage, and right. that, that's yeah. going to work well, and that show is going to have Jack Threads probably on for quite some time. Correct. Now, what are your thoughts on CPM versus CPA? Well, and, and let's, let's clarify, CPM yeah. cost for cost per thousand, uh, so you, 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 you pay for the bulk, for the viewership, CPA being cost per action, right. where you're paying for action from the listeners themselves. Guaranteed revenue versus hope for revenue. Correct. <laughs> Guaranteed <laughs> revenue is always, you know, money, uh, hey, give me the money, uh, you know, then rather <laughs> than hope. Show me the money. Show me, yeah. <laughs> uh, we do both. We have both. Uh, I personally like the CPM ones, because Everybody knows Guaranteed. what's going to happen. <laughs> right. You know what's going to happen. Uh, and the, the CPA ones, you hope something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a place for both of them. Alex, any thoughts there? Um, we do almost all CPM, and our CPM is actually pretty high. Um, you know, we, we consider Thank it kind you. of a very Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Some people try to run it real low. But no, yeah, yeah, no, we, we, our, our, because we, it's a vertical market. So we're, you know, we're pretty high up on that vertical market. We're not really, you know, a lot of our stuff isn't going to general public, which would then garner a, a, a one lower. or two dollar CPM. You know, we're, we're in a much higher uh, bracket. You know, okay. at least that's what we consider, and we've been able to get the advertisers for it. Um, I will admit that I made more money as in CPA, um, but but mostly with my own my own products. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So what's happened is is that that yeah. you know you build up you have this community and when you do have ways to serve that community with a product, mm -hmm. that has been um, in mass we have made uh, you know a, a much more as far as supporting what we do by selling products that serve that community um, that weren't being served no one else was serving that community right. with those products and so we just said well you know I was and, and this was before I was I mean this was when I was doing webcasting and and. Uh, and doing, I was on air, you know, talking about Photoshop. And I would get an email every day going, uh, you know, when are you gonna do a Photoshop disc? And I was like, oh, there's like a whole section in, you know, back, back in the day when there was Borders Bookstore. There was a whole section in Borders Bookstore on, on, uh, on and Photoshop, and people kept on asking. Yeah. So finally, I just, I just recorded, like in a day, I just recorded how to use Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And then in a week, someone edited it, and they put, put, it, put it up, in the, and I said, okay, so I did a thing on, on Photoshop, and you know, it's, Thirty-five bucks, you know, like, like you know, just kind of like, you know, like, and and, uh, and you know, we sold two thousand copies in the first week, yeah. you know, and I was like, oh, this is not a bad business model, you know, and I, you know, but but the point is, is that it, it was a, it was, but that was built from a year of service, yeah. you know, it wasn't built from, it wasn't like I'm gonna do the one thing I, I definitely see a lot of is I want to try to convert 
every show I'm trying to convert people to something which just sounds like a big sale. When you see that people's Twitter feed, you see it, you know. Right. And the big thing is, is it that tiresome it really has to be, you know, you serve for a long time and you build up, you know, uh, karmic capital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, right. <laughs> that, that you then, you know, that, 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 that then is useful somewhere down the road. Yeah. And um, for, for Geek's Life, you know, David touched on this. Uh, obviously, sponsors are important, right? We run a business. We all run businesses here. Yeah. So you ha you have to have sponsorship, um, and but I am actually looking forward to the day Patreon actually came into the market a couple of years ago. Yeah. I think it I think it's been a couple of years mm -hmm. by now. Uh, Patreon came out and they said here's a way for the community to pay the podcasters to pay the the producers. Um, easily and uh, the entire community kind of wrapped their brains around this. And that's made a huge change in uh, people, the, the audience, being willing to pay for the content that yeah. they listen to, right? right? And so right now, we're actually on a dual model with sponsorships and community support. And we're trying uh, to figure out how to model around Patreon as well. Right. That's something that we're really interested in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and they've done a fantastic job at getting everybody engaged, right? And providing that, that support system. Now, as much as I love Patreon, we kind of broke their system um, with, with uh, what we, we were trying to do. And, and we kept looking for Geeks Life. What, what do we want you know, our, our community support to, to do? And how do we want to use that? And then we also looked at what we talked about earlier, community. Yeah. And that was the most important thing to us. So we wanted to merge the two and really kind of move it in a bigger direction. And so we launched a pay what you can model. Mm -hmm. So for all the content that we provide, uh, bonus features, uh, you know, extra content, uh, learning courses, teaching courses, how to live podcast, shows. live shows, uh, where you get to interact live, uh, we launched the pay what you can model. So you can pay whatever you can afford, whatever your wallet size mm -hmm. can handle, mm -hmm. and you pay what you think it's worth or what you can afford. And uh, that's working out really well. So I'm excited about the future of community support yeah, in addition to The to beauty of that is you're, you're combining the monetization with that powerful concept of community that we were talking right. about earlier. And if you can get the community to support it, now not only are they involved in you know, helping you to, to determine which direction that you're going to be exactly. going in, now they're involved in building it. They're, they're mm -hmm. financially contributing to it, right. and I think that's powerful. Well, yeah. and it's important to us too that we didn't lock somebody out because they didn't have $37 a month. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like you don't have that, so it's like Studio 54, back of the line, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but we want everybody to be able to take part of the content because, you know, the, especially the courses, because if we do a photography course, you got somebody that they can't afford that, but they get in, they take the course, they become a photographer, they end up getting, making, a, a, you know, going out and doing weddings or whatever they're going to do, and they become a photographer. And it's changed their life, and then there will be a bigger part of the community to help it move forward to, to more people that could potentially. So do, do we see a future oh. maybe where that is the model? Well, I think the hybrid model is going to be the, that's the future. I mean, Mark Marin, he, we, at Libsyn, we have the hybrid model, too. We have what's called My Libsyn, which is a premium subscription. Mark Marin has 38,000 monthly subscribers to his premium content. Yeah. His premium content is mostly his back catalog. He, he makes his last 50 episodes available free, then after that, they become premium. And people pay it's like over 38,000 monthly subscribers. And we have it with Aisha Tyler and Adam Carolla and um, so Jay Moore and some others that are doing this. And it's really working out well. You have to do the hybrid model, but the hybrid model only works with the community. Because right. stumble upon does not, people aren't going to pay the <laughs> premium if they're stumble right. upon. Correct, yeah, correct. But what's beautiful about it is that you have all these different ways of doing it. I yeah. don't think you, know, you have to have sponsorships. I don't think you have to have your own digital products or anything of that. So I think you can do a combination like you're talking about, but you have so many options for how you're going to monetize yeah. this thing. I think it's a beautiful thing. The, yeah. the, the challenge is always to stay focused on why you got into it in the first yeah. place. And what happens is you get yes. so into monetization that you forget that what you were here to do is great, great content. But I think the community <laughs> support model actually helps with that because yeah. you become answerable yeah. to the community themselves because they're the ones paying the bills. Right. No, no, I, I think it does. And I think as long as it doesn't turn into the televangelism. Right. <laughs> you know, right, right, right. <laughs> so, you know, that, yeah, you do have to watch yourself. I've seen yourself. a little bit Absolutely. of that, you know, where you, yes. you kind of yeah, go down yeah. that path. So that, I think <laughs> oftentimes that's the challenge yeah. is to, you know, figure out how you're going to stay focused on the content and then 
around all of that. And, and I have to admit, we've buffered a lot of that by, you know, 90% of our revenue is production for everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, you know, our, our, our stuff, our podcasts are profitable, but they don't have to support the entire infrastructure. Right. Yeah. Okay. Of, the, of the company. Diversification is certainly yeah. key to any kind of business, right? Yeah. And having, if, if something goes down, you have something else that may be going up at the same time, or at least stable. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, in terms of evangelistic kind of uh, that, that danger, uh, certainly uh, Patrick Norton and Shannon Morris with Tech Thing, they've done a fantastic job at that. Every show they began with, this show is brought to you by community members like you, you right. know? and, and that actually says it all without overemphasizing yeah, right. it too. Mm -hmm. so exactly. I think, I think Dan Carlin does that. Okay. Hardcore history. Yeah. You hear him say, you know, hey, you got a buck. He's just like a buck an episode. Just give me a buck an episode. Yeah. He said at the end of each of his episodes. He only releases four episodes a year, but I mean, he gets two and a <laughs> half. He gets two and a half, three million downloads an episode. What if he go. released five? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, very cool. This has been a fantastic discussion. Uh, you guys in the audience, any questions, any thoughts? Uh, since we're talking about community, let's bring you into it. Raise hands now. Bueller. 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 Like, Bueller. 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 Nice seat. I, I, I know, I put you on the spot, yeah, exactly. didn't I? Oh. No, no pressure. Are you inviting us? Sure, sure. They, they said they were making dinner plans, so. Uh, <laughs> all right, thanks, thanks so much to all of you for joining us. Rob Walsh from Lipson, uh, Lipson.com. Rob at Lipson.com if you want to get a hold of me. Awesome. L-I-B-S-Y-N. Leslie Samuels. From becomeablogger.com. The name says it all. <laughs> <laughs> and Alex Lindsay. Pick score. <laughs> and David Foster. Yep. Geeks Life with, with her. <laughs> Geeks Life for me as well. So thank you guys so much for joining us. If you have any thoughts of your own about all the, the discussion that we had today, leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. You can attack any of us on social media, pretty much anywhere, and we will answer you. And so. if you guys want to be on the, we have a social board that's uh, shown over here most of the time. If you just put a picture on uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, wh Twitter wherever, Google hashtag yes. NAB Not show. My yeah. Not MySpace. <laughs> Not MySpace. I don't think we're pulling Although, from MySpace. Although, I don't MySpace. know. But yeah, the hashtag board. NAB show, and uh, it'll get on the, the screen if we approve it. So make sure it's clean. <laughs> All right, fantastic uh, day here at NAB Show. And we have more coming up tomorrow and Thursday, so be sure to stay tuned. Geekbeat.tv slash NAB Show. I'm Callie Lewis. And I'm David Foster. Bye, guys. <laughs>